DFS has just completed its IPO on the London Stock Exchange. Last month, following the company's announcement of its intention to float, Standard & Poor's put its B credit ratings on DFS on Credit Watch Positive. Today, I'm speaking with Natalia Goncharova, analyst for DFS, and Ram Rotnam, a lead analyst in our retail team in Europe. Natalia, as the analyst on DFS, can you explain the rationale behind our placement on Credit Watch Positive? Uh, well, the key rationale under the Credit Watch Positive is that the company is going to reduce debt after the IPO. The company plans to use all the C uh, all the proceeds from the IPO and also cash on balance and the proceeds under the new credit facility to repay all existing senior secured notes. So after the transaction, we expect that the company's leverage will uh, become uh, less than five times and its funds from operations to debt will exceed 12%. So uh, therefore, the company's financial risk profile will likely improve from the current highly leveraged to two uh, aggressive level. That said, um, the positive rating action will largely depend on the company's ability and willingness to maintain its leverage under five times on a sustainable basis after the transaction. Also, the financial policy considerations like leverage tolerance, the dividend policy, appetite for acquisitions and capital expenditure will be the key rating drivers under the new capital structure. Great, thank you. So, Ram, let's talk a bit more generally about um, about IPOs. I mean, are they typically a credit positive event for private equity owned companies? Yeah, the evidence certainly uh, suggests that, uh, as has been the case with DFS. Uh, typically, IPOs result in uh, substitution of uh, debt financing by equity, uh, and it invariably leads to uh, deleveraging. So that's clearly credit positive to start with. Uh, further, I think what IPOs do is they open up the company's uh, management and governance a bit more. Uh, so the journey from being a privately held uh, company to a public company uh, typically comes with better management and governance, uh, most evidenced by uh, the board of directors being expanded, uh, more non-executive directors being recruited, so on and so forth. So that's clearly a positive from a, from a rating perspective. And lastly, all this should translate typically into uh, financial uh, policy. Uh, being more open, uh, more transparent, and more predictable. Uh, and that's clearly a very important thing from a credit perspective. And our criteria typically looks at these factors. And normally, uh, if, you, if the private equity uh, ownership falls below 40%, it typically leads to a better financial risk profile. So, Ram, obviously DFS has priced an IPO, but is this an overall trend in the retail industry in the UK? Taking a cue from last year, we've seen names like Pets at Home, uh, Cart Factory, uh, B&M, and Poundland at the discount level um, come to the IPO market and having successful uh, share issuances. Um, certainly from, uh, from a demand perspective, there's a lot of pent-up demand um, for private equity deals which are done uh, before the financial crisis coming to maturity and the sponsors looking to make an exit. So certainly there's, there's the demand for IPOs and the market's been pretty good, I would say. Um, one thing, of course, is the companies themselves would need to have a, a, a story of uh, successful um, operating and financial performance to present uh, because uh, to appeal to a wide range of investors. And successful retailers uh, could be uh, looking to do that this year. Okay. Okay. So it depends on the, the story as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. That concludes this edition of Inside Credit. For more of our research, go to www.spratings.com. Thanks for watching.